everybody it is your boy marcus johnson we are back we got another brand that is working with us that we want you guys to support so check this out he's a raiders fan the owner as well panda supplements we got discount code 35 percent off discount code tdl for 35 percent off now what is panda supplements panda supplements is your typical nutritional supplements with it's a lot of different flavor because everything is natural, right? So you're getting your, you know, you get the proteins, you got the green drinks, you got the, you got the, uh, the free workouts, whatever you want. We got that with Panda Supplements. So make sure you check this out. One of my favorite ones, the Sleepy Supplement. This one helps me get some sleep because I don't sleep doing these films. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I do these all night. So I need some help getting to sleep. I hate my Panda Supplements. One of my other favorite ones right here is the greens right the green superfood get you some immune boost right you know what i mean laser focused digestive enzymes you know what i'm saying help everything get better down here as well so you know it's a whole lot of things we got some focus as well so go ahead and check out the website like i said panda supplements discount code tdl for 35 percent off check it out Everybody, we are back. It is taped on live. It is your favorite Raiders podcast, favorite Raiders channel, favorite Raiders everything. You guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, Panda Supplements. Guys, go there. 35% off. Panda Supplements, 35% off. You see it at the bottom there. Pandasubs.com. Make sure you guys go ahead there and support all of that, all the good products they got there. Make sure you guys do that. Support TDL, support Panda Supplements as well. Like I said, discount code TDL for 35% off. All right. And then make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL for me, at BD Williams 18 for BD. And, uh, you know, we got the pads coming on tomorrow. Or if you guys hear this, you know, today or whatever you want to, wherever you listen to this podcast or whatever, watch this. We got uh, the pads are on. So we're going to finally get some, some action. Yeah. Some yeah. real footage here. Right? Uh, maybe some footage. I don't think I really don't think they give us any footage. I, I'm, trying to think any footage. I'm trying to think back. Do we ever see Patriots footage from camp? I don't, I don't think you ever see Patriots footage from camp. Do you? Yeah. And, and, of course, who are they doing a, a joint practice with this year? Patriots. Patriots. So we're not going to see anything, you know, like with the Rams last year, their sideline reporters were doing, were, were breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. We got to see, we got to see some stuff, right. From Hunter yeah. Rampro going up against Jalen Ramsey. That was sick. That was sick. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially because it was going up against the eventual, we didn't know it yet. The eventual Super Bowl champs, but uh, going up against the Patriots, I doubt we're going to get any leaks. I doubt any reporters going to make any mistakes. Mm -hmm. Where they're just never going to report again, yes, you know, in Foxborough. So, you know, uh, or or in Vegas, probably. I, I bet McDaniel's has the same stance on it. So, yeah, they're they are being pretty tight lipped. I'm trying to comb through interviews, even to get anything about scheme. I I haven't gotten a single thing yet. What about you? Uh, nothing about scheme, man. Uh, they they're not allowed. Actually, they're not allowed to talk X and O's. I read that. Yeah. So they're not even allowed to. It's like a, it's, <laughs> it's a rule. So we're not going to get a lot of scheme from them. Um, trying to figure out what they're going to do. Um, I'm actually um, going to get a live look. I'm going on Saturday up to Vegas to kind of watch the practice. Use my SB Nation look. Use my little SB Nation card and watch the practice live. So kind of give us a little schematic idea. Um, I'm sure it's going to be mad vanilla anyways. I'm still. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, since it is practice, it might try to, you know, and especially since it'd be padded practice for about four or five days at that point, they might be throwing a lot out there. So I'm hoping to get some good action, get a good idea of what the team looks like, get some Devontae Adams live look. So it should be exciting for TDL and the TDL listeners. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I'm, I'm going to try to make sure I don't lose my press pass. So I'm, I don't know how much video. I might do some tweets, but I don't know how much video yeah. I'm going to get. Ain't no, ain't no taping for Marcus. I'm trying to lose my press pass. Guy, yeah, so so a couple things. All right, you could get the little spy glasses. You know what I'm saying with like the little camera in the in the lens. Feel me? 
Yeah, you could, you could do that. That's one thing. The second thing you could do is you could drop it into your shirt, right? And just have have the camera popping out. You know? Yeah. You, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I I I hope I get like five reps of defense, please. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Okay. They're saying they're saying the defense is like all the way on the other side. And nobody can see it. So like Patrick Graham is like he's hiding the defense. He's uh, hiding the defense is key <laughs> from the from the media too. <laughs> That's why we're not getting a lot of defense stuff because uh, they're over okay. there hiding. The, the offense is like in front of the media, and the, the defense is like way over there. Like they're like ants. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea what's happening over there. So, but uh, you get some good action. So a little bit from uh, I think guys who work for Raiders media. I think they're they're getting a little bit more looks in the actual NFL media, which is interesting. You know? What do you mean? In the house, I guess. Like uh, Levi Edwards, um, that Jesse Merrick. Uh, more, ex- more exclusive. More exclusive. Um, yeah, they're, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Deshaun Reeds and, and, um, and uh, Vic Tafers. They're not tweeting out anything right now. You know what I mean? Another guy's tweeting out 11 on 11 stuff. They get nice out, well, you think? I think so. That's weird. Isn't that weird? I mean, because Levi's – you can't trust Levi because Levi – I mean, uh, shout out to Levi. I really, I, I'm not going to knock Levi, but I mean, he, he works for Raiders.com, so. <laughs> that, that, that's all you're trying to say. That's all you're saying. <laughs> I'm not saying he, – he, he was a good writer at AL.com. He, he earned that yeah, job. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying Raiders.com. You know what I mean, it's not going to – You're right. He, he, wor- he Mark, works for Raiders. Say, yeah. <laughs> just Mark like Davis. all these guys that you're naming, okay? Yeah. yeah. Eddie Pascal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy, too. Whatever yeah, they, they the say, Raiders. it's it's coming from the Raiders. So yeah, like they wrote it or they made that content or whatever, but it got the seal of approval. So I agree, it's not the same thing. So mm-hmm. that's what you. I, I agree. You can't trust um, that. It's just you know the in-house guy. I agree. Like the athletic guys are going to ask maybe like better questions. You know, uh, you've shared with me. You know, uh, Tashawn Reed's articles you know yeah. and I, I read some of those and yeah he's got some nuggets in there that are more useful for sure than anything you get on the Raiders website <laughs> yeah for sure for sure uh first things first BD let's go ahead and get into it Denzel Good retires Denzel Good is retiring or I mean it looks like he tweeted out today it looks like it might have been something per- more personal instead of injury okay I thought was interesting but yeah. uh he did end up retiring. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of fans are freaking out. They're panicking. Um, well, we'll get into that. We'll get into the okay. panic. Okay. Okay. For me, as soon as I saw that he retired, right, obviously I started thinking about, okay, so who's going to back this guy up at, yeah. at um, right guard, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, some part of me felt like, Maybe it's like, okay, you know what? It's it's going to be a tough battle. These guys are coming along quick, you know, for Denzel Good. Looking at, oh, I'm actually on the fringe of the, this roster right now, fighting mm-hmm. for a spot. Yeah. You know, for him, maybe going out like that and just retiring instead of, you know, going out as a guy who got cut in his last year. That's the first thought that jumped into my head. I don't know why. Maybe that's a dumb thought. Um, so I don't, I don't know what your what your read on it is. If you think it's injury, if you think it's like you're saying personal, so yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, that's what he tweeted out that it was personal. But um, what I would say is, I thought it was interesting that he came back from the Torrey ACL. They didn't put him on pup, and he was still behind Lester Cotton. I thought that was. I mean, yeah, a lot of people try to say that they're bringing him back quick, you know, slowly, but you know, I figure if you're bringing him, him back slowly, you put him on the pup, you just keep him, keep him working out. I feel, I feel like if he went on the pup list, it would have meant more as, of him being a starter for me and solidifying that. But since they did not and then they cut his pay by like 2 million, right? Um, they did give a little signing bonus, but still they cut his pay by 2 million. Um, he's like make down to like a million a year. And then he's the backup to Lester Cotton, who's never started before. So I, I really feel like the writing was on the wall a little bit. And I always felt like writing was on the wall. There's a little instance of maybe he could be cut. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's 31 coming up to an ACL. I, I mean, I, I think a lot – I don't know. I think a lot of fans had some 
He's just safe. Yeah. I guess. And we've said it before on the show that we do a like Denzel Good. And we've also said in the same breath, Denzel Good isn't good enough to stop you from like trying to upgrade at the position or mm-hmm. he's not good enough where it's like he's a starter, no, unquestioned starter. Like, no, yeah. not, definitely mm-hmm. not. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think a, a little bit of maybe just him being a guy that played through some injuries and stepped up in key moments makes the fan base think a little bit, like or think like, okay, Denzel Good, he's he's better than he actually is. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? So I think that, that now that 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 player that they think is actually better than they actually than he actually is is leaving now they're thinking that there's a, a void there but there really wasn't anything there and to begin with or as much as they thought it was at least and i think it's i think you bring up a good point just real quick yeah about the pup list because if he was in the plans if they looked at his film and they said this is a guy that we really want around okay yeah you put him on that pup list and we don't rush back and you take your time you can come back week three, week four, week five, whatever, and be in it for the long haul yeah. because because they have a plan for you because they want you around, right? Yeah. So uh-huh. I, I agree. The pay cut, not going to the pub, having to come and compete against a young guy, he's probably like, hey, you know what? I'm good at this point, you know? Yeah. You, and, and you, you got to be in it. You got you to gotta really want it. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Him being the backup to Lester Cotton, I thought when I saw when I read that, I was like, wow, I mean, that's super interesting because he, I mean, Lester Cotton hasn't played, he hasn't played any snaps in the, in the NFL, really. So even if you're coming back from a torn ACL and you're a 31 year old veteran, you would expect him to be first team right away if, if, if they're, they're playing him. And, and if he's out there practicing full practice and he's running with the second team, you're like, ugh, you know what I mean? And um, it'd be interesting to see how they, what they do there at right guard, which is a great transition because you know that's the second part of this BD. What happens at right guard now? What do, what do they do? Um, in is my it opinion, Cotton? is it Lester Cotton? Is that the guy? I mean, we'll see, man. I, I I think they have to. I think with pads, we're gonna see how good he really is at this point. Um, I, like he has the pedigree, right? Alabama national champion, right? National champion, Alabama, Lester Cotton. Started there at Alabama. I don't know how many starts he has off the top of my head, guys. Do not quote me on that. But I know that he played at Alabama. He was undrafted, right? Um, and maybe they see something in him that, you know, uh, you know, maybe Tom Cable couldn't get out of him. Maybe they're getting something out of him that maybe Tom Cable didn't get. Maybe he's picking up protections quickly. Maybe he's picking up the assignments fast. You know what I mean? Maybe he's getting the information that they're giving him, and he's picking that up fast. You know, real, maybe quick, something- real quick. Go ahead. What's the language at Alabama? The offensive language? Uh, depends on when he played. It was Steve Scarkeesian. It's probably West Coast. Kind it's probably of, West Coast. Okay, so it's not spread out. Right. Nah, nah, that's Bill O'Brien. Um, he didn't play with Bill O'Brien, so uh, he. I mean, maybe he's picking things up fast, picking things up quickly. Um, you know, I, I always felt like Tom Gable had his favorites. That's why I think Denzel Good was even started last year. Over Simpson, I think. I mean, there's just his favorites he had, even though they did pick up Lester Cotton. But maybe Lester Cotton had a is having a good camp. But you know, they're moving around Parham a lot. I mean, Parham's getting first team reps uh, at both left guard and right guard. Um, they're saying I, I don't know how much he's eating up into uh, the right guards or the center. I mean, who knows how that is? You know, that's why I want to see that in person. I, I want to see that for myself, like the actual rep counts and who's actually doing what because I, I feel like they you know they see parham come and take two reps out of ten they're like he's eating into the reps you're somebody like that you know what i mean because he's supposed to be taking andre james's reps too at center but how many reps is he taking at center with Derek Carr? is it like two out of the this 12 guy, this, this guy must be playing two positions at once he's eating everyone's reps like come on how many reps can he be eating into right before? guard center and left guard he's, he's playing them all at once Dylan parham that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's no just, no it's wonder stupid. they picked him. No wonder they picked him. The guy can play three positions at once. <laughs> um, that's sick. I'd like to see that. No, but uh, anyways, yeah. anyways, 
Yeah. I think – what about Leatherwood? You didn't bring him up. Is Leatherwood in the equation? I was, I was going to bring him up last, but I just want to talk about Parham moving around a little bit because maybe they want Parham at guard. You know how I feel about that play strength issue. He's a little small. You know, small uh, for a guard, small for a guard in the NFL, small for a guard, right? And he's just better fit at center. So, you know, I just kind of wonder what their plan is for him. Maybe year one, maybe they're just swinging him around, see what Andre James got. But, you know, if, if his best spot center is like, why did you hang on to Andre James? I don't know how that's going to work. But Leatherwood moving inside, you figured it'd probably be the easiest fit for this and then just go with the same five they had last year, right? To start the year. Maybe get some continuity going there. They might feel like they have continuity going. I mean, Leatherwood, Leatherwood going inside means he lost the battle, the battle at tackle, right? So mm-hmm. I would, I would prefer that Leatherwood beats Brandon Parker out. That he's like, I'm look, I'm better than Brandon Parker at tackle, yeah. right? Yeah. Which mm-hmm. I mean, that shouldn't be that bat big of a hurdle to clear for a first round pick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully, you know, we see him just beat Brandon Parker out. And then if we have to roll the dice on the Celeste Cotton guy, so be it. Yeah. Um, oh, this is gonna be, it, if Brandon Parker beats him out, man, I, I don't know how that's kind of concerning to me. I, I mean, it's a first round pick. Then he ha- then he has to play guard and he has to be a pro bowler at guard, period. Yeah. Period. I mean, yeah, if he, <laughs> he just can't, can't get beat up Brandon Parker right now, man. Brandon Parker is a, is a swing tackle. Yeah. That's what he is. He's a swing tackle, left and right tackle. Basically, he played left and right tackle for you, right? In, you a don't pin, want him. in a pinch. In a pinch. In a pinch, right? And 16 games of Brandon Parker, I don't know. They, I hope they can coach his ass up. He better, They better coach him up. I don't know how much coach – they don't have that much time. I, d- I, just rather not, I just rather not see it. It's not like, you know – did did Leatherwood have a great year last year? In the no. beginning of the year, he definitely struggled. At oh, he definitely right? struggled. Uh-huh. Okay, I would rather see year two of of Leatherwood, right? Like that's mm-hmm. an unwritten book. The book is unfinished here, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Brandon Parker making that kind of stride at this point in his career that would be an anomaly. Like that would be extremely rare yeah. to see a guy flounder and be a swing tackle barely good enough to be on the roster kind of guy yeah. and then all of a sudden like yeah i'm a surefire starter in the nfl no questions that that would be unheard of almost almost unheard yeah. of right yeah so yeah like the chances of that happening versus the chances of leatherwood just like coming in and just like being just like solid i like i think that that's a better chance so hopefully we see leatherwood to tackle but if not he can slide into guard hopefully he beats out mr cotton oh my gosh Either way, Leatherwood has to start. Leatherwood has to start. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it all depends. Because Leather, Leather, Leather Cotton, he didn't have a good preseason last year. I looked it up. He didn't have a good preseason. You watch, um, Did you watch it? Did you watch it again? Uh, I, I haven't gone back and watched it. I, I might go back and watch his reps. I, I probably should do that. I'm trying to finish these stupid quarterbacks. But I – So, I got – you know, he didn't play well in the preseason last year overall. And – that's why it's interesting that he's getting that shot at right guard. But the easy fix to me is you just move Leatherwood inside, but then that goes to the point that he lost to Parker, right? Or do they move Leatherwood inside and get Daryl Williams, who's still available? Aha! Let's let's make a move here, right? Don't don't the Raiders have the biggest cap space? Yeah. And then pay Darren Waller. Yeah, man. How much do- <laughs> they have enough room to give Darren Waller like eighteen million right now. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. here's my thought on that. I know you didn't put this in the ticker, but I want to get yeah. your thoughts. Okay? okay. They have the money. Okay. They re signed Darren Waller now when he's got like, what, like two years left on his deal? They re signed Darren Waller now. Mm-hmm. He's going nuts. He's going nuts. Because they know if, if they re sign Darren, Darren Waller now and they sign like some mega tight end contract or something like that. That just means they know in two years when his contract is over, like mm-hmm. that that'll be peanuts compared to what he's worth because he's yeah. gonna go he's gonna go crazy, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if they if they drag their heels on paying him, they're not they're not gonna resign him. You think so? 
it'll be interesting because I, I think a lot of it with him is that he's not a big he's not a big stickler with the money thing right now so he's not pushing it um i don't think he's pushing it like like the media wants him to like hey you're underpaid they're like they're like trying to shake him and tell him he's underpaid like i feel like there's a big push from the media like they're all surprised that he showed up and he, he hasn't caused any problems it's like <laughs> it's darren waller it's not like he's gonna you know they're, they're, really they're so upset they were trying to get like 50 stories off on it I know it was like all our guys, just, all our guys were ready to write so many stories off of a Darren Waller holdout, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and then um, you know this the uh, and yeah, he's he, is he underpaid for sure, but does he care? That's that's the kind of the thing that we have to think about too. How much does he really care about that at this point in time, right? And um, yeah. I, I, I don't mean, see him ever holding out. His yeah, I don't think I don't I don't I'm not worried about him holding out for sure. I don't care about that. Yeah. I'm just saying. If they re-sign him now, they restructure, they get him a big signing bonus. I just mm -hmm. think it means he's going to go crazy, like in this offense. They have huge plans for him. But if they're dragging their heels, that means that they're, you yeah. know, he's just the third option. Yeah, I mean that, that is true. That is true. Um, but like, like I said, I mean, if he's if he's like, I got two years left. I'm not. I don't really care. I'm not having. I'm really not going to push for this. That makes a big makes a big difference, though. But. But yeah, so so we're going out of Southerwood at, at right guard. Is that we're doing BD? Is that, is that where we are? I mean, that's wow. what I would do. Right tackle. He better win. He better beat Parker. Up. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're killing me. You're killing me, man. He better beat Brandon <laughs> Parker. Are you good? Right. No way, man. Well, I mean, we, we tomorrow they put the pads on, and like, and I and I said this on the radio. If Leatherwood goes out there and he's hang, he's hanging with the Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, he's we're gonna win. And, Brandon Parker's yeah. doing that, then he's gonna win. Yeah, you know? that's neither of them are gonna hang though. Uh, <laughs> that's that's gonna be a tough first day in Pats for sure. But I'm saying, if Leatherwood does, man, that, that there we go. There we go. Oh yeah, for sure. There we go. Sure. There we go. It's gonna be it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a test. Who's gonna who's gonna rise? Who's gonna rise? I don't expect a day one, but we'll see. At some point, it's gonna click yeah. on one of these guys. We'll see. Uh, All right. Uh, Let's transition yeah, yeah, into into wide receiver battle. Okay. Um, we were talking about what to talk about before the show came on. I mentioned Mac Hollins. You said let's talk about the wide receiver battle, probably because you want to talk about more guys just than just Mac Hollins. Uh -huh. I got a I got a list of the wide receivers in front of me. Okay, I'm gonna read okay. them out. Okay. Right. The one, obviously, Adams. Okay. The two, obviously. Renfro. Mm -hmm. Okay, Waller is the tight end. He's the Y out there. Now, who's going to be that extra guy? Now, for me, when I'm looking at this in my head, okay, mm -hmm. you got a tight end. You got a, uh, a slot. Okay, and now you got one wide receiver, Adams. He can play X, he can play Z. And now you need another outside guy. That's what I'm just, when I see that, when I'm looking at it, right? So, mm -hmm. but there's a ton of names here to be that third wide receiver. So I'll just read off these guys to you from the top. Isaiah Zuber, Jordan VC, DJ Turner, who was on the team last year. Demarcus Robinson comes over from the Chiefs. Tyron Johnson. Who, where did he play last year, Tyron Johnson? Uh, he, played with the, he played with the Raiders. He just didn't get any targets, really. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Number one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Justin Hall, number 12. He's a rookie out of Ball State. And then Keelan Cole. And then also Mac Hollins, who's the biggest out of all those guys at 6'4". So yeah. the number three guy, okay, when I name these guys, when I read these guys out to you, that's a, that's, uh, that's a no-name list. That's about yeah. as, as a no-name of a list as it gets. You think that there's a battle here? What, like, what does this group, like, shape out looking like? I, I, I'm at a loss, even trying to <laughs> come up with who's who's going to rise up here. You know. Uh, so I mean, I think they still need depth at wide receiver. I mean, because what if one of those guys go down, right? I think yeah, I it's that's a possibility. They they still need the depth there, and I think I think those guys do add pretty good depth. Now, I don't know how many wide receivers they're going to keep and what they're going to keep them for, but you know, I know Mac Hollins. He's the guy to get first team reps right now. Um, he's probably gonna get the majority of them for a while, just because he blocks really well 
and uh, you know he's a special teams guy, and he doesn't demand a lot of targets, right? Because you know our problem with him is that you know he has the catch rate like his drop rate is seventeen percent, and he had like thirty targets last year. So it means he basically was dropping everything, right? Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> right. when that's happening, you know that's not a good look, right? But then you got a player like Keenan Cole, who I believe if somebody went down, could actually play wide receiver and fill in as a depth player. Um, you know, he's a guy who he's getting like 600 yards a lot. Um, you know, he's one of those veteran receivers, like, hey, like a Brandon LaFell type of thing, or those type of players where like, yeah, they get open and, um, you know, they're serviceable, but they're, they're not superstars, right? They're like, they come in there, they're kind of, you know, ser- you know, service solid wide receivers, depth guys. And I think he's like the perfect one, in my opinion, because he can get open. He, he only dropped one pass last year. You know, he's only, he's had, he's had a couple of years he hasn't dropped a, a pass. He can and catch, is what you're saying. He can really catch. He gets open, and he can catch. <laughs> so, so right? So, I, I think he is a player that I would say, like, if somebody went down, you know, they could work him in, and he can get some targets, and he could fill in well. I don't think Matt Collins can really be that guy. And that's 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 the, the thing I have with Matt Collins is if somebody got hurt, what can you really do with him? Long term, I think Keenan Cole is a whole, whole more a lot you could do with him. Demarcus Robinson, I think he's you know. Yeah, I was gonna throw in Demarcus Robinson next um, to get your uh, thoughts on that. Um, but I mean, like, but real quick, so we're we're having two conversations here. Okay. 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 Because so the one conversation I think I agree with you here is probably the more surface level conversation. Who's like after Runfro, after Adams, who's like the guy who gets the most targets, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. What you, and so we're talking about a guy who fits in around those guys. You're talking about who's the next best wide receiver. And even if that guy doesn't see as much time, like maybe Keelan Cole, he's backing up Devontae Adams. He's basically doing everything Devontae Adams does. Yeah. If, if Adams goes down, Keelan Cole could have a big game. It has a better skill set, even yes. if. It's, I mean, he's obviously not as good as Devontae Adams. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Um, okay, so so that's that's great. That's that's super valid. So you see Keelan Cole for sure making the roster. That's- oh, 100%. I see. He's already have, had some big days in level 11. So um, what about, okay, and then, so outside Matt Collins, right? Demarcus Robinson, probably that battle right there. I don't mm-hmm. know about Tyron Johnson, this guy Jordan VC, um, one year player out of Cal, apparently six three two twenty, sounds like a big boy playing wide receiver. Yeah, I, I do want to speak about uh, Tyron Johnson because he's having a, a pretty good camp too. Okay, talk um, to him. He's he's a speed guy. Um, you probably remember from you know uh, the Chargers games in twenty twenty when they decided they wanted to play the same cover two the same exact way, and the Chargers ran the same play over and over again. That was Tyron Johnson was catching those passes. Yeah. So. Um, and he's been uh, getting open in camp, getting open deep, made a big play today uh, over Jonathan Abram. So I think he's a sleeper too as a guy that could make the team just because of his speed element and he's having a good camp. And um, he's he's a good at tracking the football in the air and he gets open, man. He gets open deep. I have no idea why the Chargers let him go, in my opinion, because they, they, they haven't replaced him yet. But, you know, they want to dick and dunk over there. Yeah. I, okay. Now I do remember him. Okay. So yeah, he used to play for the Chargers, and yeah. So the reason why I remember him is because he had a really good game against Raiders once, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So Tyron Johnson, you like him in the mix? Okay. Uh, um, yeah. I'll go for that. I mean, they're pro. What, how many receivers does McDaniel's usually keep? Six or seven? I, I don't know. Or five. Head, Probably no, five. Okay. Probably five because they keep a lot of running backs, bro. That's the thing. a lot of backs. So if we're talking about five. We're going to Adams, obviously. Renfro. There's three more spots. Cole, Hollins, Robinson. Those are the three more spots. Probably, yeah. Or no, or it could no. be Johnson. Or it could be Johnson. Oh, yeah, 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 Johnson. But who's the return man there? Amir Abdullah. <laughs> I don't know if I returns that. Yeah, just screw it. Just keep keep, keep putting, give it to those backs, right? Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, yeah. why is Amir Abdullah even there? And I was like, and I was like, oh, he returns kicks. <laughs> he does do okay, that. I guess so. Yeah, he does do that. 
All right, um, let's transition to the opposite side of the ball. Apparently, the okay. second secondary had a big day in camp uh, yesterday, if you're listening to this, um, the day after we record it. So, you know, I mean, I mean, I saw some names listed, getting some pass breakups. Deron Harmon was in there. Rock Yassine mm-hmm. was in there. Amin Robertson apparently was in there. Mm-hmm. Um I think I think there was a guy whose name I didn't recognize that I missed. But anyways, you know, so so people are who work for the Raiders. I've seen, but maybe correct me if some independent journalists have echoed this sentiment. But seeing a lot of stories about the Raiders, Raiders secondary in camp, mm-hmm. right? Um, so yeah, so let's talk about you know this this group here, and you know. Um, yeah, you know what what we're expecting here from them. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think I guess it's it's, I mean, it's good signs to hear. I mean, they actually did make the plays. You know, I mean, the pass breakup did happen. I mean, the, the interception happened with Darren Harmon. Um, all those things happened with the secondary, right? So, I mean, they're they're obviously out there battling. You know, they're good at press coverage, so they're probably doing a lot of press coverage right now, getting that man to man stuff in there. Probably getting a little bit of the man match stuff going, whatever you know mixing it in and mixing all the other coverages in. But, you know, it's it's good to see. You know, Rockerson was, was huge, right? He was, he was like a linebacker. He was looking at that uh, press conference. He's always, been, he's always been big. He's always been, he's always big, been big like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. always rock like that. Uh, I know um, Avery ha- is having a, a good uh, camp so far just from the look that he's doing. So with Trayvon Mullen out. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just not a sexy group. No, it's not sexy. Not, not at all. Not sexy at all. Not but at all. So here's what I will say. Here's what I will say. Someone in this secondary, a corner, is going mm-hmm. to have a massive year, huge year. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why is because they're going up against Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro all all year. Okay. In camp and OTAs, someone is getting sharpened right now. Okay, and mm-hmm. they're gonna get they're gonna gonna get unleashed on the NFL. So if that is Rockasine, if that is Anthony Averett, maybe Trevor Mullen when he comes back, Nate Hobbs, one of these guys who are who's lining up in in Hunter Renfro's face and Devontae Adams' face every day in practice, going doing the one on ones. Get because you know you get lined up on the sideline, you get the one on one. You you got to get your your mindset ready for that, right? So you, you're constantly getting your mindset ready to go up against. Elite route runners in practice, right? I think that that's really going to pay dividends as the year goes on. I think we're going to see these corners make a lot of big plays against big time wide receivers because of the what they what we do in practice. And hearing that they're making plays right now, yeah, offense is going to start making plays, defense is going to start making plays, right? Mm-hmm. That's how it works. Okay, so if you're just sitting back there just dunking on the defense all day long, and they don't ever make any plays, we don't ever hear about the defense making plays. That's that's a bad look. Right. Yeah. They got to elevate the offense. So it sounds like to me, secondary did their job in practice today. They elevated. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. now it's on the, now it's on the offense to drop some bombs on them tomorrow and then you yeah. know, keep on battling. So hopefully that's what that means, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you figure you, you hope you figure that's what it means too, but I mean, definitely want you hope that's what it means as well. Um, Cause even uh, I, I mean, there's some good buzz from the linebackers too. Um, the linebackers are playing well in, in coverage as well. So, I mean, they're mixing it up probably. It, and I don't know if what the, the biggest elephant in the room that is not even on the list, uh, some some of this tells me that the backup quarterback is uh, might be terrible. So, <laughs> oh, because <laughs> none of these are Derek Carr throws. I'll tell you that right now. None of the throws that we're talking about, they're not, they're not Derek Carr throws. I, th- I think. One of the Rocky Sin ones was okay, but like hopefully, like the hopefully, pick, the, like the Ron Harmon pick, and um, that was a Stidham. Uh, so I don't think I don't think the, I, the I know was- I know they weren't Derek Carr throws because Josh Dubow Dubow would have been tweeting about her for hours if it yeah. was. So we, we exactly. would have known for sure if it was. Um, yeah, there was one more thing that I wanted to mention that I lost it. Oh, 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 linebackers. You mentioned linebackers. Yes. yes. Okay. No, I'm not worried about the linebackers in coverage. They said they did great in coverage. Whatever. I'm sure they did great in coverage. Well, <laughs> what, what I what, what I need to see 
okay, well, we need to see, especially that first preseason game. Mm-hmm. Graham's run fits, his style of, of defense against the run is so much different than um, Gus Bradley's. I heard Devon Diablo talk about playing against the run and like how that was a big emphasis getting off blocks because mm-hmm. in this defense you have to win at the line of scrimmage. You yeah. know, at least at least unless Patrick Graham wholesale changes his philosophy and just picks up what, you know, Gus Bradley did last year, I'm guessing it's gonna be a lot of that. Devon Diablo is gonna have to get on these guards, get on these centers, get in their face, win with his hands, create that wall at the line of scrimmage. That's what I care about. I care about seeing who's going to do that well. If Denzel Perryman is going to be asked to do that for 17 games, you know, like yeah. that's going to be super interesting to me. I hope we don't see the, you know, um, guys get injured, you know, because they're playing such a dramatically different scheme than they played last year. And they're just going to really have to come down downhill like battering rams. So that's why that's why I need to see. I don't I don't care about the coverage. Who cares about the coverage line? In line yeah, line. yeah. And, and you know, Dion, uh, Diablo did talk about um, he's gained weight over the off season too. To kind you of have to it's a must. It's a yeah. must. Yes. So, so he's he's prepared. He's preparing to try to take, to take that spot. You know, um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that works for him. But, you know, I, I I just think it's so interesting that he even played solid at linebacker last year. Never played linebacker at all. <laughs> played the NFL. And he, you know, did his thing. You, you know you know why? You know why? Corey Littleton was pissed off last year. I don't know if it was the media talking trash about him because they, they definitely talked plenty of trash about him. I don't know if it was the coaches lit, lit a fire under us, but he came downhill and he was like, he was playing the run like so fierce last year. I was like, who is this? Is this Corey Littleton? Like, did they find some guy and, you know, with dreads and just put him in Corey Littleton's? You know, like, this is not the Corey Littleton that uh, I, I was like accustomed to watching. And I yeah. think Divine Diablo seeing that, seeing like, okay, that's the mentality I got to bring if I want to get out, get out there on the field, right? It forced yeah. him to be like, okay, if if I if I want to beat this guy out, like I got to bring it that hard. So yeah. Corey Littleton fought him off for like the first like ten weeks of the season, but Divine Diablo, uh, Diablo obviously eventually took over. And when he took over, we didn't see a drop off because he was bringing that physicality, right? But yeah. less less waiting, you know, and making you know using your head fakes and making guards miss. Less of that, more meeting him at the line of scrimmage, take him off. So it's going to be even harder this year for uh, Di- Diablo to go from playing, um, you know, in the secondary in college to playing kind of like a weight react linebacker to playing like now a downhill plug linebacker. That's whew, two years. Big difference. Hey. Big hey. difference. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Uh, any other last thoughts, PD? Anything else? Um, no, nah, that's it, man. Oh, uh, um, my boy. I love this guy. Uh, Damon Arnett got arrested. <laughs> Man. <sighs> you know, partying too hard in Miami, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. He got pulled you know, over twice. He got pulled over twice in the span of a couple hours, I guess. So, you know, he's wilding. But uh, ho- hopefully, he, you know, he just gets it turned around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't worry about him playing football ever again. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, nothing else. I guess the the Derek Carr comment, the Paul Gutierrez thing. Oh yeah, did you want to weigh in on that? Go ahead. That's definitely nah, more nah. salient. <laughs> that was. I think it's funny. How, you know, the reporters are just act like fans. It was, it was a fan question. It was stupid. <laughs> you had a fan, bro. You're a damn reporter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? What do you say it then? Like, yeah, you sound like a guy, like a like a fan on Twitter. That's what he sounded like. Yeah, he definitely did. Like, bro, that's mad at a professional to me. It's like, yo, you're a reporter, not a fan. Why Why do you say it then? Why do you guys ask me the same questions all the time? <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Stop asking me the same damn question then. You always ask about it. What do you mean, Paul? You're always asking the same shit. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. Cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> that's the same question. It's like, of course he's going to say that. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> it, it, like it's added it, it, to me. It's like it's football talk. Like, it doesn't. Even, it, yeah, he's just coming up here and just saying the same things. Like, yeah, like, come on. It's, it's 
it's part of his contract. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be here and talking to you. Or you think he likes to do this? Yeah, man, man, it's crazy. To contractually me. <laughs> obligated to go up and talk to you. So yeah, he's just regurgitating lines. Okay, like, can you believe that that a person's going through the motions like you probably are at your job, Paul? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. <sighs> just, <laughs> just so, Derek Carr feeling froggy. It is look. Everyone will talk about the reason why Rich Gannon was successful with Gruden was because he was like he was a dick mm-hmm. and like that synergy or whatever, you know, like that kind of dickish energy. You know, people would say that a lot. I, I don't know if I agree with all that, right? But I will say kind of like not caring about how you look so much, I think maybe can, uh, can be – could be a little bit uh, breath of fresh air for some car haters who always hate on this guy, right? You said it. You said car haters hate on him because he's corny, right? And oh, then one of that one of that defensive coordinators say he was like, he's he's easy <laughs> he's easy to pick on because he's a goofball or something like that. He's you know he said that he's basically the same thing that you said, right? So like yeah, yeah right? people have this opinion about Derek Carr, mm-hmm. you know uh, maybe he's not the kind of guy that you go hang out with for some of us, you know whatever. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But mm-hmm. regardless, regardless of, uh, if that, of how you feel about him like that, but we are seeing, because five years ago, he would never have said that to Paul, right? Mm. So he definitely doesn't care anymore. Like, no, we're, we're seeing less and less care given. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't care anymore. He doesn't care. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting. Just, just the questions that you know they ask. It's like you, you can't be shocked if you get the same answer with the same quarterback year eight, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, all right, BD. Anything? Uh, anything else? I think we're good. Uh, uh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe, 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 subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, you know, you know, we're gonna get some tape here soon, guys. I promise. Uh, you know, what I'm saying. Of course, you got some clips over this, but you know, we're gonna get some tape here, guys. We're gonna get tape coming to us. So, uh, when's the first preseason game? Uh, I think two weeks from now. Hall of Fame game, right? Yeah, and we're just watching the four string guys go. It's gonna be a lot of a lot of Tyree Glisky for you, bro. It's a lot of Tyree Glisky tape. <laughs> Dang, you, he's that far down the depth chart. I haven't heard anything about him, but I'm just saying. He, I mean, if if he is, he's gonna get a lot of run in a Hall of Fame game. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, Isaiah Pullamau and Tyree Glisky out there. <laughs> yeah, playing too high, bro. Lighten people up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> All right, man. All right, everybody. Uh, see you guys later. Peace.